Anthony Blinken and Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin are holding a briefing after talks with President Vladimir Zelensky in Kyiv. Let's listen in. For the Ukrainian government uh, and for the Ukrainian people. Um, this was, in our judgment, an important moment uh, to be there, uh, an important moment for, for Ukraine, uh, for the war, uh, an important moment to have face-to-face uh, -face conversations in detail uh, about the extraordinary uh, support that we provided, security, economic, humanitarian, as well as the massive pressure that we've been exerting on Russia, and then to talk in detail about how we carry that forward uh, across all of those fronts. Uh, I would say that um, without putting words in his mouth, uh, President Zelensky expressed deep appreciation for President Biden's leadership and for the incredible generosity and support of the American people. Uh, in turn, we expressed deep admiration for his leadership, for the extraordinary courage of Ukrainians in standing up to and pushing back this Russian aggression. Um, part of our commitment going forward involves a number of things that I was able to share with President Zelensky yesterday, including the return of American <clears throat> diplomats to Ukraine starting next week. Uh, including uh, President Biden's attempt to nominate a new ambassador to Ukraine, Ambassador Bridget Brink, currently uh, an ambassador, someone I've served with for uh, a long time, deeply experienced in the region, uh, who will be a very strong representative for the United States um, in Ukraine. We had an opportunity as well to talk about where this goes from here. Um, with the success that Ukraine has had, it's also true that Russia continues to try to brutalize parts of the country. And the death and destruction uh, that we continue to see is horrific. But Ukrainians are standing up, they're standing strong, and they're doing that with the support that we have coordinated uh, from uh, literally around the world. Um, the strategy that we've uh, put in place, massive support for Ukraine, massive pressure against Russia, uh, solidarity uh, with more than 30 countries, uh, engaged in these efforts is having real results. And we're seeing that when it comes to Russia's war aims, Russia is failing, Ukraine is succeeding. Russia has sought as its principal aim to totally subjugate Ukraine, to take away its sovereignty, to take away its independence. That has failed. It sought to assert the power of its military and its economy. We, of course, are seeing just the opposite, a military that is dramatically underperforming, an economy uh, as a result of sanctions, as a result of a mass exodus from Russia that is in shambles. Uh, and it sought to divide the West and NATO. Of course, we're seeing exactly the opposite, an alliance more divided than I've ever seen it, and indeed, uh, new countries uh, considering uh, applying for membership. The bottom line uh, is this. Uh, we don't know how the rest of this war will unfold, but we do know that a sovereign, independent Ukraine will be around a lot longer than Vladimir Putin's on the scene. And our support for Ukraine going forward uh, will continue. It will continue until we see final success. Secretary? Good, good morning. And uh, well, first of all, let me echo what uh, Secretary Blinken has said uh, in terms of the characterization of our meeting. I think it was a very uh, productive uh, meeting, very engaging uh, session, uh, and, and we were uh, very happy to have that opportunity. So uh, dur during the meeting, uh, we expressed our deepest condolences to the president uh, for the loss of so many civilians and, of course, uh, the loss of those uh, courageous uh, troops uh, that have done just a, a magnificent job of uh, pushing back uh, Russian forces. Uh, we also expressed our admiration for their professionalism and for their commitment to defend their, their democracy. Just, it's been uh, extraordinary to watch, and I think everyone would agree with me there. Uh, I agree with Secretary Blinken that uh, the president did express uh, his uh, deep appreciation, along with the uh, Minister of Defense and the Chief of, De of Defense, uh, their deep appreciation for what the American people uh, have continued to do uh, to ensure that we get them uh, as much uh, assistance uh, as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, so uh, our focus uh, in the meeting was to 
uh, talk about those things that would enable us to win the current fight and also build for tomorrow. And, and uh, again, a very productive discussion. We talked about security force assistance, uh, and we talked about training, and we also talked about uh, the, the key things that we're going to discuss uh, in the session that I'll conduct tomorrow at Ramstein with a number of uh, ministers of defense and chiefs of defense. This session is focused on doing things to generate a, additional capability capacity for the Ukrainian forces. And so it's a great opportunity uh, to get a, a, a good update from the CHOD and from the Minister of Defense and from the President on the things that they are focused on, the things that they need. That will enable us to have a more productive discussion with the CHODs and Ministers of Defense tomorrow. Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, I'm just wondering if you could tell us what you saw uh, during your visit to Kyiv on your journey uh, um, on the way to Kyiv and what you saw in the city. Were you able to speak to any Ukrainians outside the government and what did they tell you if so? And then for either of you, do you see a scenario where, the, where international support enables uh, Ukraine to avoid losing this war to Russia but isn't able to fully expel Russian forces or reclaim its victory? And how would you think about um, such a scenario? Thanks. Uh, happy to start. In terms of what we saw, we, uh, we took a train into, uh, into Kyiv uh, from southwestern Poland. So didn't see a lot except looking out the train windows uh, on our way in. And in Kyiv itself, we went right to the presidential palace. We spent about three hours with President Zelensky with his senior team. That was the entire focus of our visit. We wanted to focus. Uh, on the work that needed to be done in uh, looking at uh, the game plan that we have, how we're moving forward across all of these different lines of effort. So that was the entire focus. There wasn't much of an opportunity to, to talk to um, uh, average Ukrainians. We certainly saw people on the streets in Kyiv, uh, evidence of the fact that the battle for Kyiv was, was won. And there is what looks, uh, you know, from the surface at least, to be uh, normal life in Kyiv. But that's in stark uh, contrast to what's going on in other parts of Ukraine in the south and the east, where the Russian brutality uh, is doing horrific things to people uh, every single day. In terms of uh, uh, wars won and lost, again, I come back to the proposition that uh, in terms of Russia's war aims, Russia has already failed and Ukraine has already succeeded because the principal aim that President Putin brought to this, in his own words, was to fully subsume Ukraine back into Russia to take away its sovereignty and independence. And that has not happened and clearly will not happen. Where the, the contours of the war goes from here, how much death and destruction continues, obviously that's a deep concern. Uh, we want to do everything we can to help the Ukrainians bring this to an end on the best possible terms as quickly as possible. Much of the work that we're doing is enabling them to strengthen their hand both on the battlefield right now, but also eventually at a negotiation if there is one. I, I agree with Secretary Blinken. We were focused on uh the conduct of the meeting and, and engaging the, the, the senior leadership. So we didn't get a chance to, uh, to do any walkabouts or engage uh, uh, civilians or citizens on the street. Uh, on the way in, we did, it did look like things were beginning to come back uh, to normal. Uh, it was uh, Easter day so in, uh, in Kyiv, so uh, certainly a number of people would have been uh, at home and, and not out, out on the street. In terms of uh, our their ability to win. Uh, the first step in winning is believing that you can win. And so they believe that we can win. We believe that they, we can win, they can win if they have the right uh, equipment, the right support. And we're going to do everything we can, continue to do everything we can to ensure that that gets it. So we're, we're, uh, we're engaged with the CHOD, engaged with the Minister of Defense. And as this fight evolves, uh, you know, their needs will change. And so as those needs change, we'd like to be one step ahead, uh, but uh, we're, we're going to be responsive to what the Chad and Ahmad uh, believe that they need. Um, Secretary Austin, I have a question about aid deliveries. How are you tracking the 
stingers and the javelins and the, the those sensitive weapons. We're seeing more and more imagery of those weapons falling into the hands of Russian-backed forces in Donbass. Do you have a plan to track those weapons? And in terms of humanitarian aid, Secretary Blinken, uh, there's an article in the Boston Globe today quoting a USAID official saying that the billion dollars in aid passed by Congress has not even been transferred to USAID accounts and that much of the aid that's supposed to be going into Ukraine has not been delivered, calling it a critical strategic failure. How do you plan to fix this problem? The first part of the question, Jen, thanks, thanks for that question. In terms of our ability to track the weapons that are going in, as you know, we don't have uh, any forces on the ground, so that's uh, that is difficult for us to do. We did have a very uh, uh, good discussion with uh, both uh, the Chad and, uh, and the President, Minister of Defense, on the necessity to make sure that uh, that those weapons are tracked and as best possible to make sure that uh, they're protected from falling in the hands of adversaries. Now, when you're in a fight, as you know, uh, if uh, if a specific battle is lost, then uh, you have less control over that, over your ability to control items. But uh, they, they are focused on this issue, and they know we are concerned about it, and uh, we'll continue to, to, to engage. So. And Jennifer, in terms of the humanitarian assistance, hundreds of billions of dollars of assistance has already gotten in, not only to Ukraine, but to surrounding countries that are caring for Ukrainians who've been displaced, who are refugees. Uh, literally every day as we speak, aid is going in. This is aid. Uh, if you're here in a few hours, this won't be here. It's going to be on a plane, on its way, uh, or some other means, on its way to, uh, uh, to Ukraine, and then it is dispersed uh, throughout the country. We've had detailed conversations with our Ukrainian partners about making sure that once the assistance gets into Ukraine, it then is dispersed, as the Secretary of Defense was saying about the, uh, the weaponry, in an effective way. And if there are uh, bottlenecks there or challenges there, we're working through them. But what I'm seeing, at least, is that Aid is getting here and other distribution points. It's getting out the door incredibly quickly. Uh, again, this place is going to look different five or six hours from now than it does right now. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Secretary Austin, uh, you mentioned, you know, keeping abreast with what the Ukrainians need. We've seen, uh, you know, certainly some 155-millimeter uh, howitzers and other things being processed through here. What did uh, President Zelensky say he needs next? And uh, for Secretary Blinken, uh, I understand you may have spoken with uh, the U.N. Secretary General about his upcoming visits. What is, what is the strategy for engaging, uh, for his engagement or for world engagement with Moscow and with Kiev uh, to, to see it into this thing? As you've heard us talk, uh, uh, or say in the past, uh, recent past, the nature of the fight uh, has evolved uh, because the terrain that they're now focused on is a different type of terrain. So they need uh, long-range fires. Uh, you've heard them uh, express a need for tanks. And we are uh, doing everything that we can to get them uh, the, the types of support, the types of uh, artillery and munitions that will be effective in this stage of the fight. Uh, and so we'll get a chance to, we've done a lot. As, as you know, you've seen uh, the, what we've done here in recent past with the 800, recent $800 million authorization provided by the president allows us to provide five battalions of 155 howitzers, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, of uh, rounds of, of uh, artillery. Uh, and so we're also engaging our, our uh, colleagues in, in other countries for the same type of capability. And we see indications early on that they're going to they're be, uh, many countries are going to come forward and provide uh, additional uh, uh, munitions and, and howitzers. So we're going to push as hard as we can, as quickly as we can, to get them what they need. This will be a great topic of, con of conversation for our meeting tomorrow as we go down to Ramstein. And um, in terms of the uh, Secretary General, I spoke to uh, the U.N. Secretary General on Friday, and he is heading to Moscow early this week. And our expectation is that he's going to carry a very strong and clear message to Vladimir Putin, which is the need to end this war now, the need for a ceasefire, the need for humanitarian corridors, uh, for aid to get in, for people to be able to get out, uh, the need for Russia to stop its brutalization of Ukraine. It's a clear, direct message that he should be carrying on behalf of virtually the entire uh, international community. John. Are you defining America's goals for success any differently in Ukraine uh, now than you were at the beginning of this war? And if so, uh, what are those goals today? You want to? I'll, I'll just start and I'll let uh, Secretary of State to give his thoughts. But I think, and he's already kind of 
indicated the first piece of this. We want to see uh, Ukraine uh, remain a sovereign uh, country, a democratic country, able to protect its, uh, uh, its sovereign territory. Uh, we want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. So it has already lost a lot of military capability uh, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of its troops, quite frankly. And uh, we want to see them not have the capability to very quickly reproduce that capability. Uh, we want to see the international community more united, uh, especially NATO. And we, we're seeing that. And that's uh, based upon the hard work of, number one, President Biden, but also uh, our allies and partners who have w willingly leaned into this uh, with us as we've imposed sanctions, and as we've uh, moved very rapidly to demonstrate that we're going to defend every inch of NATO. So. Really nothing to add. I think the Secretary said it very well. Thanks. Take a final question, Matt. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Secretary, were you able um, to offer uh, President Zelensky any um, uh, idea about the timing of the reopening of the embassy in Kyiv, uh, not simply the return of uh, diplomats to, to uh, Lviv? And then for both of you, President Zelensky, when he kind of uh, leaked the, that, that you guys were going there on Saturday, said, please don't come with empty hands. Uh, you obviously didn't go with empty hands, but did you get the sense that he is satisfied with with what it was that you did bring? Uh, Matt, in terms of the uh, the embassy, uh, we will have American diplomats back in Ukraine starting next week. They'll then start the process of um, looking at how we actually reopen the embassy itself in Kyiv. I think that will take place over a couple of weeks would be my expectation. Uh, we're doing it deliberately. Uh, we're doing it carefully. We're doing it with the security of our personnel foremost in mind, but we're doing it. Um, and with regard to um, uh, President Zelensky, again, uh, without wanting to characterize him too much, I, I can just repeat what I said earlier. He expressed to both of us uh, deep and repeated appreciation, both for President Biden's leadership, but also for the generosity of the American people. I think he said, Lloyd, uh, that uh, the United States has been Ukraine's strongest supporter, something that, uh, that they won't forget. Uh, and uh, look, we never, we never come empty-handed because this is, as the Secretary of Defense said, this has been an ongoing process where we have been from before day one, because remember, the initial drawdowns that President Biden ordered go back to last Labor Day, months before the aggression. We wanted to make sure that if Russia pursued the aggression, that Ukrainians had in hand the tools they needed to stop it, to push it back. And that's exactly what happened, thanks to their courage, to their commitment, but also thanks to the equipment that they had in hand from before the war started, they were able uh, to do that. But as the Secretary said, this has been evolving, and so the nature of our assistance and the assistance we're getting from others has been evolving. And as you would expect, he, he did express, express gratitude to, uh, to the American people and our allies and partners for what they're, they've done from the very beginning and continue to do. But he's in a fight, and so while he's grateful for all the things that we're doing, uh, he's also focused on uh, what he thinks he'll need next in order to be successful. And again, uh, they have the mindset that they want to win. We have the mindset that we want to help them win, and we are going to do that. Now, in terms of uh, specific types of things that we were able to discuss and, 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 and kind of lay out, you know, we reminded them that uh, Thursday, the pre President Biden signed a, uh, you know, a drawdown, and uh, on Saturday, uh, Howards was, was showing up from that drawdown package. That is uh, unimaginable speed, uh, and uh, it's due to the hard work of all the men and women who are working day out, uh, day in and day out, to, uh, to do the kinds of things that uh, they're doing. But we're going to remain focused on giving him what he needs to be successful in the future, and uh, that's what you'd, you'd expect. You'd expect for him to say, thanks, but... Uh, uh, and, and he's really grateful, but, you know, let's focus on what needs to be done. We'll get a chance to talk some more about that in our meeting uh, with the charge tomorrow, and I look forward to that meeting. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, everyone.
OK, that was US Secretaries of State and Defence speaking in Poland following a high-level visit to Kyiv and a meeting with President Volodymyr Zelensky. The pair arrived in the capital via train, they said, and spent three hours with Zelensky and his team at the presidential palace. The US has pledged $700 million in funding for military aid and they were standing in front of supplies which will head to Ukraine. Uh, Antony Blinken revealed US diplomats will return to Ukraine next week and they plan to open the embassy in Kyiv in the coming weeks. He went on to say that Russia is failing and Ukraine is succeeding in this war and America's support will continue until it sees complete success. Lloyd Austin will be conducting a session with defence ministers tomorrow in Germany.